Welcome to Cheese in Depth. Today, we're talking with Brian Fiscalini from Fiscalini Cheese. It's always been a pleasure working with Brian, one of my first uh, times at a creamery and a farm uh, was with the Fiscalinis. It was very generous of them. They, they spent a lot of time, an entire day, uh, walking me through the entire process. And I'll, I'll never really forget that. It was such a great experience. And uh, I'm looking forward to being able to talk with uh, Brian a little bit more and kind of catch up on things that are going on. So uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Brian. And uh, so uh, please welcome uh, Brian Fiscalini. Hi, Brian. Hi, Michael. It's great to be able to connect with you right now in these uncertain times. Um, I always enjoy being in person with you and educating people about cheese and sharing our passion that both of us have for artisan cheeses and um, looking forward to talking with you today. Uh, what do you want to start with today? So I've got some of the cheeses here next to me as well as they're, they're next to you, Michael. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll start with our, our bandage wrap cheddar. So that is the cheese that has a, a black label on it. Um, it's made in a 60 to 65 pound wheel. It has a very sharp cheddar flavor. It's also got a crunchy texture that comes throughout the aging process. So it's made with raw milk, like I said. Uh, we only have cows, no, no goats or sheep on our farm. And it's aged for a minimum of 14 months. Uh, when you try this cheese, you'll immediately know that this isn't your grandfather's cheddar, right? This is um, an English style, uh, very sharp, cheddar cheese that can be used in so many different applications um, and we were blessed and honored to have this cheese win the best farmhouse cheddar at the world cheese awards that are held in london every year and to this day we are still the only cheese company outside of the united kingdom uh, to be honored that award so uh, a tribute to our cheesemakers, um, to the quality of milk that we have, and you know, just that we've been able to consistently make this cheese and have it be our best-selling cheese. Um, a really great, great story that a, a small farm in Modesto, California, was able to successfully win an award that has never left the United Kingdom prior to us winning it for the first time. Well, I have to say that uh, I've been enjoying this cheese for a, a long time. Um, and I also want to thank you for the sheer size of my samples today, because, uh, you know, this will uh, be a nice uh, happy hour today, tomorrow, and probably for the next few weeks, because it's a nice chunk of cheese. But, you know, um, tell us about the, the process of bandage wrapping and why you would do that. Sure, so more people have heard of cloth bound than they may have heard of bandage wrapped, but those are synonymous terms. So what we do is when we prepare our stainless steel hoops that hold about 60 to 65 pounds of our cheddar cheese curd is we insert a cloth or a bandage um, into the hoop so that when we pour the curd into the hoop, it is held together with that cheesecloth or bandage. So then when we remove the hoop from the curd and the bandage the following day after cheese making, uh, we have a very tight, tightly held cheese with the bandage that's around it. So what we're then able to do is we, we rub the exterior of the cheese and then we put it into our aging rooms so that a rind will naturally be created and protect this huge wheel of cheese throughout the aging process. 
So we'll make sure that the bacteria that are growing and the rind that is being created on the outside of the cheese is a very thin layer so that you can enjoy a very nice piece of cheese with only having a thin layer of rind on the outside. You know, that kind of, when you, when you think about the aging of this cheese and, uh, you know, it's, it, it, look at that. It's just, it is not a hard, you know, uh, terribly difficult cheese. It, it really is such a beautiful, crumbly cheese. So much butter is in this. It's just, just incredible uh, how much sweetness there is along with a little bit of tanginess. But, the tanginess isn't overpowering. It has a nice balance of flavor. Um, with this, because um, of the richness of this, uh, I am uh, pairing this with a, a Volti and uh, a really nice uh, Genoa uh, little salami. Pairing it with uh, the Torpedo, but this is an extra IPA. I got the uh, IPA pack for uh, for this uh, tasting. So a little uh, sausage uh, salami, and uh, what do you what do you usually pair this up with yourself? Very similar to what what you've paired with a good a good dry salami. Um, we try to find a beer that has the right amount of acidity but not a beer that, you know, is overpowering so that the acidity in the of the cheese and the acidity of the beer clash. We, we like them to complement each other. And, you know, Michael, you and I over the years have done a lot of beer and cheese pairings. And we find that our, our cheddar cheese isn't impossible to pair uh, with beer but it can be a challenge due to that age and sharpness uh, with a crisp beer. So, you know, you really gotta have fun with it. Uh, you gotta find some good beers. I tend to go with a beer that's gonna be a little bit on the, um, a little bit more on the fruity side so that the acidity and the fruitiness of the beer complement each other rather than a, you know, triple IPA or something like that, but you can tell us how, how your pairing is going over there. Well, I, I was originally <laughs> going to start off with the uh, pale ale, and, uh, uh, which is one of my favorites for anything that has some tanginess to it. But in reality, uh, the torpedo uh, is actually a little bit better of a, a choice. Uh, it doesn't have, it's not a real hop bomb, and that's one of the things that I have a friend that won't even touch IPAs because, the, because they don't really care about the intensity of the hops. But this is uh, Sierra Nevada, and they have they use the whole cluster hops. They don't use the pellets. So you really get a balance of that. You know, you're not overpowered by the citrus or the pine. It's just a nice, even hoppiness that really works really well with the cheddar. And this bandage wrap also has a little bit of earthiness to it, especially the closer that you get to this rind, the more earthy you really pick that up. And that really plays really well with the two, uh, that you really get that intensity uh, and flavor. And then when you add something like a Genoa salami, it has that really meat to it. So the butter and the fattiness of the salami works really well. And then you have that little bit of tanginess and that's where the beer comes in. And that's to cleanse off all that extra butter and all that fat there. And it literally lets you be able to enjoy that and then go back and start almost fresh again. So your palate doesn't get worn down. And so, uh, you know, you could pretty much go through a, a, a beer and as much as you can possibly stuff into your mouth without feeling uh, overwhelmed. I think that's the challenge, isn't it? It is, it is, because you know, these are just so uh, magnificent. You know, this was the cheese that I made uh, when I came in uh, to spend the day with you. And one of the 
problems, I guess, comes with that. And, uh, and this, is, this is probably the moment that I had beyond respect for the ability. I mean, they were there at the farm at four o'clock in the morning, getting the milk, getting everything set and all that. And by the time that we were getting the curds and uh, hooping them, it was uh, probably 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, you almost got, you know, 11, 12 hours uh, into this process. And then the most brutal part of this is getting those hoops from the, the, the uh, you know, they're up out of that because you are literally, my toes are on the outside and I'm reaching down and you got to lift this up. And what are they, like 60 pounds with the curd in them? Yeah, so the stainless steel hoop alone weighs 20 pounds without curd, and then you throw 65 pounds of curd in there, and you've got a workout. Yeah, and it's it's not one. There's like, I don't know, 12, 20 of these guys in there, and, you know, dragging them out. You know, I, they were nice enough. I, you know, I did my one, you know, and then I stood over there kind of whimpering in the corner thinking, oh, please don't make me do it again. And uh, so, you know, at that point, you know, they were putting it in, getting it pressed. And then uh, the next day, the wrap and uh, uh, the uh, uh, big fat around it. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anything else you want to say about the bandage wrap? No, I think you did a good job uh, explaining it and enjoying it with your almost five o'clock beverage. Close enough, uh, you know, anytime there's, it's five o'clock somewhere, you know. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, step into our next cheese. This cheese, like I mentioned, is named after the town in Switzerland where we still have family members to this day. So uh, my father took a trip to Switzerland, tried to learn as much as he could without, uh, getting any proprietary cheese making recipes. Um, and that's what inspired this cheese was that, that trip that he took to Switzerland. And he tried so many good local Alpine cheeses to that area of the country uh, that we never get to try here in the United States. So this cheese, I would, uh, I would guess, for Michael and for those of you that are enjoying this with a, a nice IPA, usually this cheese here seems to go pretty well with any beer pairing. Um, you know, we call it our, our beer pairing cheese, and we really didn't anticipate that we were going to be pairing this with beer until I started doing some beer and cheese pairing sessions <laughs> with Michael. Uh, in which we learned that historically people uh, pair cheese and wine. Well, beer and cheese have an awful lot of similarities and uh, characteristics that actually, I would argue, make a better pairing than cheese and wine do. Um, so when you try this cheese, we'd mentioned the earthiness of the banded draft cheddar. This cheese kind of has some of those fruity flavors as well as an earthy undertone. Um, it's, not, it's not as sharp, and I wouldn't even use the word sharp to describe this cheese. Uh, it's mellow, but it's sophisticated. It's got a, a characteristic and a flavor profile that really is unlike a lot of cheeses out there. Typically, we use this cheese and our San Joaquin Gold for our mac and cheese recipe, uh, putting on a grilled cheese sandwich. You can use it like most Swiss or Alpine style cheeses in a fondue, has very good melting properties, um, but feel free to give it a try for yourself and, and let me know what, uh, what you think about the Leonza. This has uh, always been one of my favorite of yours. And, you know, we were talking, you were talking about some of the beer pairings. And uh, when you think about it, I, I've had people tell me, you know, about cows don't eat 
grapes, they eat grain. And so beer is made out of grain. And so they work, uh, you know, that is a natural part. Um, I've always considered that for most common beer, beers or uh, pairings, beer does really well. It, 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 it does have all those characteristics. It's liquid bread. So uh, each intensity gives you a, a different, different flavor or different uh, pairing capability. So on this one, uh, I'm using the Sierra Nevada Hop Bullet on this. And uh, this is Magnum Hops and oh, Talk about a balance. This isn't one of those pine cones uh, that's all citrus. This is really earthy with some sweetness to it. Uh, you really taste the grain on here. And with this cheese, you can really use that kind of grain that goes along with it. Uh, it's, it's not overpowering. It, it balances out really well. It really brings out more of the butter. Uh, and again, there's just a slight earthiness that goes along with it. So, you know, what I'm going to pair with this is uh, a little taste elevated, and it's got some uh, habanero mustard seeds. And this is so cool. These are, these are uh, mustard seeds with a little bit of habanero in there, pepper, and some very nice sweetness. Mm. Brings more butter out, brings a little earthy. There's a spiciness there, but the cheese kind of mellows it out and you really get a taste of spice, the, the habanero, without the heat. So you don't really get the heat. It's, it's a lot more balanced out. Um, really fun. And uh, I also uh, have, because there's some sweetness here, uh, some rustic bakery. You know, you know these guys pretty well. Uh, and... Uh, you know, this is a, a almond and apricot, and, and it's just, you know, works really well. So you can take it from something that being a little spicy to something a little bit more savory. Yeah, all the products that you're, most of the products, I should say, that you're using today are all uh, Northern California, you know, Bay Area, Chico, Modesto, Central Valley. So it's, uh, Nice to see that you are bringing the Northern California flavor to Florida today. Absolutely. Rustic Bakery, you know, you can't get a better uh, cracker, wafer, flatbread, all of that. And, uh, you know, of course, Sierra Nevada, you know, they're the, they're, they're the best and original of pale ale. Everybody that makes a pale ale, that's a standard that you go by. And then, uh, Really adore them. I think they really do such a great job. And uh, again, another family owned, another family owned. Um, you know, when you when you think about the farms and uh, the all the, the the things that you accompany with this, uh, Taste Elevated, uh, Lori Krieger. You know, it's her and her husband, and and you know, it's their family. And so, a lot of times when people go out and they see something up on the shelf, you know, and you're you're buying it. You are supporting a family. You know, a lot of these cheesemakers, like yourself, they're supporting the family. You're supporting the herd. You're supporting the cheesemakers, the people that are handling that. Um, you know, that are the, the, the couple that's making the, the uh, flatbreads. Uh, Lori Krieger, who's making the, the, uh, uh, the, the spreads and the chutneys. So, you know, these are opportunities that you get to enjoy some of the handmade, high-quality products, and you get to support a family. Yeah, uh, I'm thankfully, uh, given how our relationship has evolved over the years, I've been able to sit on panels with some of those people, and it's a lot of fun because we're all we're all regular people that have passion about making excellent food and products and then sharing our stories so when you get to see similar products on the same plate you know it's really fun it's it's a cool experience that uh that i'm glad you're helping bring together michael well i i have the privilege and, and uh the time of of being able to be friends with you and the others and 
uh, I've seen you. I, I've seen your farm. I, I know the I know the cheesemakers, and and I think that a lot of comments that I've heard over the years, and even sort some of my friends, and you know, supporting a, a cheesemaker. You know, you can go out, and there's commodity cheeses in the dairy section, and all of that. And if you really look at the price difference you know, for the quality that you're getting, it's not that big of a jump. And uh, a lot of times. When you run into a product, um, you know that is that exceptional like yours. It's so wonderful to be able to be able to have that uh, in part of a cheese board, or just being able to enjoy it. You know, these uh, are going into recipes uh, part of it. You know, every single piece of cheese that I have is integrated. Either we snack on it, or we create a recipe. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been cooking a lot with cheese. <laughs> You're not alone. So, you know, another thing about Leonza is that those of you that are like sour beers, uh, I, I've stepped into that and uh, it hasn't always been an easy journey for me. Sour beers have always been a little more uh, troublesome for me. Uh, I, I find that uh, pairing them up can be a challenge. Uh, but Boston Beer Company does some sours, some single style sours. And you and I paired this up in Denver with this sour, and it was like the most magnificent pairing uh, of that cheese. And I was really surprised that you would be able to get that. So I think like what you said earlier is, you know, if you have a beer that you like, try it with a cheese. Because at least even if it doesn't work, you still like the beer, and you still like the cheese, and it doesn't always have to work. Sometimes you just got to enjoy them by themselves. Well said. Yeah, so the uh, next and final cheese that we're showing and tasting today is our San Joaquin Gold. I spoke about the gold medal mistake that it is, so I won't spend time on that story again. Um, so it is an Italian style, semi-hard cheese, and it's got a really unique flavor when you, when you try this cheese. We don't know how to classify it sometimes because people will ask us, well, is it used like a Parmesan or is it like a Fontina or is it like an Asiago? And the answer really is none of the above. It's got such a unique flavor to it and a, a really good texture for grating over soups or salads um, or just snacking on. So, we're not 100% sure where to put this cheese yet, and I think we're, we're happy about that because it is so unique that it doesn't fall into any category. When we were doing a uh, beer and cheese pairing at another location, we tried this cheese with an imperial stout, and I think we've also tried it with a porter. And one of the panelists, I can't remember who it was, but they hit the nail right on the head when it comes to describing this cheese. And when we tried it with the Imperial Stout or the Porter that, that both have chocolate nodes, they said this is like eating a bowl of popcorn and having a chocolate bar. So it was such a unique uh, description that that person used. And I'll never forget it. But when you try this cheese, it almost seems like you're having movie theater popcorn. Um, and then depending on what you're going to wash it down with, if that beer happens to have chocolate nodes, it picks up this kind of dessert, really high cream butterfat uh, with chocolate. So this product I love pairing with things because because of the butterfat and the creaminess of it, it usually does really well um, in a variety of pairings. I agree. This is, uh, you know, one of the easiest cheeses uh, to eat. Uh, it, it's got such a nice sweetness to it. Um, it's not overbearing. This is the snacking cheese of the snacking cheese. You know, you can just sit down and you don't have to have a big pairing with this. 
uh, you can you can go across the board um, uh, where you want to go. Uh, it has such a nice sweetness and and uh, easy goingness about it. I uh, am actually going to pair this up with a sweet and tangy mustard seed, and the reason for that is because I want to bring up the butter in here, and by having that little bit of tanginess, it's going to bring up more butter. And the piece that I tried, Michael, I know that uh, we, we've got some cheese there on your cheese board. But the piece that I tried definitely had some crunchy um, tyrosine crystals from the aging process that it makes the experience even better. Um, you've got a little bit of that grainy texture. So it's just a, it's a great cheese. I'm glad that we uh, made the mistakes that we did in order to create it by accident. But this cheese has been a great selling product for us over the years. It's a great storytelling piece. Uh, my father named it San Joaquin Gold in order to do the same thing that the Europeans do, which is name a product that was created in a region after the region. So Modesto sits in the San Joaquin Valley along with many other agricultural valley towns that that make products that go all over the world. So San Joaquin Gold, named after the valley, and then gold was our attempt at humor as we, we won a gold medal with it in the first competition that we entered, um, not expecting to win anything. So that's why it's called San Joaquin Gold, and that's uh, our way of sharing a little bit about Northern California and the agricultural valley that um, We've been producing products in for over a hundred years with uh, you and your family. All right, so this is the Sierra Nevada. This is the 40th anniversary, happy anniversary. All right, and uh, uh, again, this is not a hot bomb of citrus and pine. It is real sweet hops. And when you talk about doing something like an imperial stout or doing a porter with the sweetness on here, this Hoppy 40 uh, is, is got that. And so pairing these two up, you really get that savory, wonderful flavor characteristic between the two. But what I like about all of these is that there's a symmetry about them is that they're not, any one of these is not going to take you down a path of, oh my God, that's such a strong, tangy, super sharp or uh, exceptionally sharp. It's well balanced in its sharpness and it's, and it's butter. Uh, you know, the, the Ionza, more butter than anything else, but it has a nice balance of that uh, cream flavor. And then of course, the San Joaquin Gold, one of my all-time favorite snacking cheeses, and uh, you know, just the the beauty of that is uh, amazing. Uh, you know, I remember uh, the rind; uh, it feels very natural now. I remember there was a time that it was paraffin, right? Yeah, we're we're using a food grade coating um, on the rind of the San Joaquin Gold. And over the years, we have, we've tried different things um, in order to keep the cheese intact and to keep the right moisture level, even though it is a drier cheese, uh, you don't want any cheese to dry out. So the, the coating that we're using now, uh, we've been using for a few years now, we feel like we finally got it down. And that just, I mean, that speaks to the fact that we're always learning, we're always trying new things. We want our products to be very consistent wherever they're sold across the country. Um, but we also know that when you're an artisan cheesemaker, no two cheeses are gonna taste the same uh, from one day to the next, from one season of the year to the next. So it's a fun challenge that we have of trying to make 
our products consistent while knowing and maintaining the fact that it's impossible for our cheese to be completely consistent and you know they're not mass produced they're made in small batches and i think it's really cool that um, you are able to try three very very different cheeses that were made from the same cows on the same farm but you just look at how the flavor profiles are, are so different. And that's our cheesemakers using their talents, the different cultures that we're using, the different aging rooms and processes that are involved throughout the aging process. Um, and that's, that's what makes being a, a small cheese producer challenging and rewarding at the same time. Well, I have endeavored in my career to get your name out, to get more people to taste your cheeses and to, to really get an opportunity because there are a lot of cheeses that are out there that uh, don't even stand a candle to you. You're, these are such exceptional cheeses. Uh, uh, the stories on them are unique. The farming is unique, the farmstead, there's just a lot that goes on here. You know, and uh, uh, one other thing that uh, I was uh, sitting here looking at was uh, that with that sweetness here, you can also uh, use uh, an Effie uh, cracker, uh, their, their uh, shortbread. This is a uh, uh, corn cake, and it actually brings out uh, this... Uh, uh, sweetness and again a little earthiness out of there by just adding a little bit of, uh, of, of sweetness to it and uh, the Effie's is really kind of like a real fun part to be able to have with it so I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to be able to do this come out and play and bring out the cheese and that and uh, I'm hoping that those that watch this on the recorded uh, version. We'll uh, uh, reach out to Fiscalini.com and, uh, or is it FiscalliniCheese.com? FiscalliniCheese.com. That's right. And order your cheese and do this on your own because this is worth every second of time uh, to be able to do that. So, Brian, thank you again so much for coming out and playing. I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you. And to everybody that was able to watch, I encourage you to go to the Artisan Cheese Case and uh, pick up cheese from your, your local farmers, you know, support local family farmers. And uh, just know that we really appreciate any time that you purchase our products. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. And again, quite a pleasure to be able to uh, sit down and hang out with you. So for those of you, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of uh, more cheesemakers coming out. And the most important thing that I want you to take from this is that when you buy from these farmers, when you buy from the, the farmstead cheesemakers, you're, you're supporting the families. So when you go out, buy more cheese from farmstead cheesemakers. Good night, everybody. Good night, Brian. Thank you, Michael.